uh, treated it fairly. I'll tell you how prepared I was. Uh, I called for a ban from people coming in from China long before anybody thought it was, in fact, it was your network. I believe they called me a racist because I did that. Uh, it was many of the people in the room, they called me racist and other words uh, because I did that, because I went so early. So when you say we weren't prepared, had I let these tens of thousands of people come in from China a day, we would have had something right now that would have been, uh, you wouldn't have even recognized it compared to where we are. How many people have passed away? How many people have died as of this moment? You could multiply that by a factor of many, many, many. So when you say that I wasn't prepared, I was the first one to do the ban. Now other countries are following what I did. But the media doesn't acknowledge that. They, they know it's true. They know it's true, but they don't want to run. Mr. President, thank you. Mr. President, thank you. Um, I have two questions. Do you consider the term Chinese? O-A-N. Yes, sir. Thank very you. good. Thank you very questions. much. Um, treat me very nicely. Do you right. consider the term Chinese food racist because no. it's food that originates in China or it has Chinese No, I don't think it's racist. I don't think it's racist, though. No. On that note, major left-wing news media, even in this room, have teamed up with Chinese Communist Party narratives, and they're claiming you're racist for making these claims about Chinese virus. Is it alarming that major media players just to oppose you are consistently siding with foreign state propaganda, Islamic radicals, and Latin gangs and cartels, and they work right here at the White House with direct access to you and your team? It amazes me when I read the things that I read. It amazes me when I read the Wall Street Journal, which is always so negative. Uh, it amazes me when I read the New York Times is not even, I don't, I barely read it. You know, we don't distribute it in the White House anymore. And the same thing with the Washington Post. Uh, because you see, I know the truth. And people out there in the world, they really don't know the truth. They don't know what it is. Uh, they use different slogans and different concepts for me almost every week trying to catch something. Last week it was all oh, chaos. You see me, I, there's no chaos. I have no chaos. I'm the one telling everybody to be calm. There's no chaos in the White House. We have unbelievable professionals. It's really, I mean, I think I came up with a term. I hope I came up with a term, but it is fake news. It's more than fake news. It's corrupt news. Uh, they write stories without calling anybody. They write a story uh, today. Uh, I had a couple of stories where they, they never call me, ever, that I know of. At least nobody tells me. Uh, they'll write a story about me without even asking my opinion on something. It's totally fake. I've never seen, I mean, there is a story in the Wall Street Journal today. About Chinese media, racist for Trump to call virus from China Chinese virus. By Francis Martel on March 17, 2020. The Communist Party of China, through its foreign ministry and propaganda arms, vocally objected on Tuesday to President Donald Trump referring to the Chinese coronavirus, originating in the central city of Wuhan, as the Chinese virus, claiming that doing so was racist. Trump used the term in a series of messages on Twitter, a medium the Communist Party has banned Chinese people from using, announcing measures to support the U.S. economy while most businesses are forced to shut down to prevent the virus from spreading. The Wuhan virus is believed to be highly contagious and can be deadly in older people and people with pre-existing conditions, causing fatal pneumonia. The United States will be powerfully supporting those industries, like airlines and others, that are particularly affected by the Chinese virus, Trump said. We will be stronger than ever before. The most recent study on the origins of the virus identified the first human diagnosis of infection to have occurred in Wuhan on November 17, 2019. China made its discovery of a new coronavirus public on January 20, 2020. In the two months before that announcement, Communist Party officials in Wuhan allowed mass gatherings and organized at least one attempt at holding the world's largest banquet, inviting 130,000 people to sit and eat in close quarters. China then allowed 5 million people to leave Wuhan and travel around the world for the Lunar New Year holiday. Despite the clear origins of the virus in China, the Communist Party has insisted that it is not clear where the outbreak began. Chinese officials have accused the United States of creating the virus and using it in a biological attack on China, offering no evidence for this theory. The Chinese Foreign Ministry responded to Trump's message by complaining that it had smeared China by noting that the global pandemic currently underway began there.
we call on the U.S. to stop finger-pointing at China. The utmost priority is for the international community to cooperate on fighting the virus, spokesman Geng Shuang told reporters during his regular briefing on Tuesday. The U.S. should focus on its top priority and play a constructive role in international cooperation on health security. The Global Times, a Communist Party propaganda outlet, disparaged the reference to China in relation to a virus that originated in China as reckless and racist. In a story titled Trump's Racist Tweet Another Attempt to Deflect Blame, the newspaper falsely claimed that labeling a virus to reference to a country, region or people contradicts long-held principles of the World Health Organization, WHO, and cited experts who called references to China by U.S. officials a serious diplomatic fiasco. The WHO moved to stop naming viruses after their places of origin, a common practice that has resulted in names like Ebola, Zika, Spanish flu, Middle East respiratory disease, MERS, and others, occurred only in 2015, and triggered significant criticism from medical experts and virologists who worried that the new names would confuse laymen. It will certainly lead to boring names and a lot of confusion. Lin Fa Wang, an expert on emerging infectious diseases at the Australian Animal Health Laboratory, said at the time.